Hi everybody, welcome to the PokerUpdate.com weekly burn and turn for the week of August 23rd, 2015. I'm Robbie Straczynski. And I'm Shimmy Weiss. And we're going to be going through four, some, four great articles published at our site, PokerUpdate.com, during this week. One of them is it's time for a world championship event for poker. One of them is that California is, per- is pushing the hardest for uh, online poker legislation. We're also going to go over the nine common poker misconceptions. And also we're going to end off with uh, Poker Central filming a couple great new uh, television shows. So should be, a, should be a really good time. I think so. So let's uh, jump right into it. Uh, first article is written by James Gwill. Uh, it's about it's time for a poker world championship event. Um, what does that mean? We already have a, a world championship event, well, the World Series, no? Yeah, I mean, everyone always looks at the main event and thinks that's the number one poker, uh, you know, whoever wins the main event is the, clearly the world champion. But right, but that's not really the champion of all of poker. I mean, there's right. so many events that happen over it, the calendar year. It's not necessarily true either. I mean, we see that with the main event, because it takes place in the States, right. for the most part, most of the participants are, uh, are U.S. citizens. It's not really a world event. It doesn't open up the doors for our people who might not necessarily be able to get there. Right, and as many people as do travel to the World Series each year, there are events like the APPT, which takes place in Asia Pacific. There's the World Championship of Online Poker, people just playing from their homes in front of the computer. There's the PCA Championship in the Bahamas each year uh, of EPT Grand Final winner, Aussie Millions. Tons of huge events taking place over the year during the poker calendar. And, you know, you'll remember the who won this one, who won that one. But if there was one winner, one Take them big winner, all and put them in the same room at the same table and that, crown a champion. That would be really, really cool. And you imagine you have, what, nine winners, basically, of these huge events. You put them at the table, and they are playing for the World Championship of Poker. It's a great op-ed written by James Quill. And what you, he talks about uh, yeah. that uh, what a, what an opportunity this is for poker as well. You could spend an entire year promoting this event, for sure, getting the entire world really into it. It's, it would be it would be uh, the gladiator event of, uh, yeah, of I guess, poker. I guess you could say that. And you get like an organization like the GPI involved, the Global Poker Index, it's owned by Alex Dreyfus, and this is an organization that aims to sportify poker. So if you think about it, you take the winner of this event, the winner of that event, the winner of this event, you put them all at the same table, you've got a great vehicle like the GPI, they also own the Hendon Mob, and they're using all of their promotional efforts to go ahead and you know, make this the preeminent event of the calendar, that, of the calendar, that would be really, really cool. The question is, where's the money going to come from for something like this? Well, when you're doing something like this, uh, James pointed out, you got you got a lot of opportunity for advertising. You're right. talking about bringing in people. This is going to be the number one watched poker event of the year, assuming it's promoted. Probably, Absolutely, and you want to give you want to give a good payout to first place. You want people to be playing at the top of their game. Right. So you should do one million dollars there you go. Right? <laughs> at least one. but you know for something like this it could be even bigger I mean, it depends you know what type of sponsorship money you get on this right. and where would it be broadcast there's a great uh, network poker central which is going to be debuting very soon we'll be talking about that later in uh, another one of the great articles that we published over at poker update a great vehicle for broadcasting something like this and of course when you've got a 24 7 poker network you have commercials like you said building right. it up and building it up every time there's a new winner during the calendar year you know, main event champion, you got your WPT World Championship winner, Aussie Millions. You know, every time there's a new one, another face gets added. Who's going to be at the table? You got like the mystery check marks, uh, the question marks over everybody's Absolutely. head. You know, that could be really, really cool. And of course, on Twitch, everyone, everything, you know, that's good goes on Twitch these days as far as poker is concerned. Great way to broadcast an event like that. And, it would certainly uh, be something we would be watching. Uh, we'd be following that uh, throughout the entire year to see who's going to be playing at a game like and that. And speaking of following, don't forget to follow us at Poker Update <laughs> on Twitter. We're also on Facebook. And uh, yeah, press at PokerUpdate.com. You can always reach out to us. Let us know how uh, you like our uh, presentation here at the Weekly Burn and Turn, our articles, etc. So let's, get, let's jump into the next article that James was talking about, about uh, California. Right, online poker in California. We're still crossing our fingers. We want to see that happen. I uh, am from California. I was born and raised there in LA. And I got to tell you, there are 38 million people just like me, Californias, Californians. We want online poker back. You remember those halcyon great days, you know, before the UIGEA was passed, before Black Friday. Things were going amazing. You just log on, you get onto your computer, you just go and you play. You don't have to jump out to the bike. You don't have to go out to the commerce. You just want to sit in your underwear in front of the computer and play online poker again. You know, what is the deal? Well, there are three states that 
have legal online poker in the U.S. right now, right? right? Nevada, New Jersey, Delaware. And as a former New Jersey resident, I got to tell you, if New Jersey could do it, there's no reason that the other states are, <laughs> uh, are lacking. Exactly. And, you know, usually they say, as California goes, so go the rest of the state. So, I mean, uh, this is a good opportunity if the residents uh, pressure their lawmakers to get poker legalized on the state level, perhaps, you know, move to the next level would be interstate agreements between California and the three states that already have it legal in the United States. The third step would be, of course, taking that entire player pool, making it connected to the international player pool, and then you need an operator. You need, uh, you know, businesses operating like, for example, poker stars like 888 Poker, which is very active right now in the United States getting that network of people together and you know poker stars to that effect they did have a really really cool promotion recently where they had their big pros like negrano they had uh you know live Bury, they had vanessa self they had jason somerville going up and down the california coast to 11 different land-based poker rooms trying to get people excited <laughs> about it's, got, it's poker. gotta happen with the people people have to open their mouths they gotta they gotta raise their voices and make it happen and the thing about poker players you know we're, we're both poker players ourselves and you know when you want to go ahead and play online it's just it's it's easier to let something come to you. But with, when it comes to U.S. regulation and legislation, you have to really be active. You have to push. You have to get uh, join like the Poker Players Alliance. Get involved. Pressure those lawmakers. Tweet to them. Write them letters. If you really want online poker to happen, you can't just you know blow out the candles from your birthday cake. You and can't say, just oh, wait around. It's got, you got to actually get up and help out and, and make it happen and make it something that works. Exactly. So you know James wrote a great article about that. I highly recommend you should read it. Uh, great article at pokerupdate.com. Yeah, well, I think we should t speak about his, uh, the last article of his that we're going to speak about today, which is the nine common poker misconceptions. Sure. There, are, there are quite a few, but I liked what he broke down here. Mm -hmm. um, number one, first of all, that poker is like blackjack. I know that a lot of people look at poker as a game of luck. Mm -hmm. They don't see it as a game of strategy. It's one of the biggest misconceptions of poker. Yeah, it, I would, yeah, go ahead. It's, uh, no, I mean, look, uh, when a poker player understands that when you're sitting down there, it's a very different type of game than blackjack. Blackjack, you're playing against the casino. Mm -hmm. You're trying to beat the edge of the casino. When you're playing against another player, the casino has no invested interest in, in seeing you lose. It's all about ousting the other player. It's about out, uh, out moving him. Out maneuvering, out maneuvering, out bluffing, and things like that. I mean, that's also why yeah. I personally love poker. It's like, you know, when you're playing one of the house games like Blackjack, you know that you're in a built-in disadvantage. And at poker, mm -hmm. it just matters how good you are. Yes, there's a little bit of luck involved, or a, even a great deal of luck involved, but there's always that skill element, and that's why you see, uh, you know, people who are really working on their game, they improve over time. Okay, right. I mean, blackjack, you can go ahead and start counting cards, okay, but then you'll get thrown out. <laughs> you know, poker, the better you improve your skill set, you will get better at the game. So it's certainly not like blackjack, definitely a misconception about the game. Yeah, it's uh, about how aware you are. Um, he spoke about as well that online players have no tells. And someone from who's not as aware, if you play online, you play enough and you, and you focus and you're really paying attention mm -hmm. to what's going on, mm -hmm. you'll see and you pick up on little things. You pick up on betting patterns, you pick up on, uh, on the timing. Some Sure. Some people are are uh, they they start chatting and that gives a, that gives you a little bit of a glimpse into what the way that they're playing and uh, for sure and you have to remember yes it is a virtual game in a sense but there are real people behind those avatars or between those you know behind those blank spaces there's a reason that the software of these online poker rooms they allow you to take notes it's because you'll notice something about them and utilize that you know that note taking software so it's certainly not an issue oh they're all bots it's all machines. That's a misconception about Absolutely. poker. Absolutely. Uh, another one is that, uh, you know, Texas Hold'em is a game for the young. I humbly beg to differ. Uh, you know, people remember uh, that very, very famous hand that happened at the World Series with a man named Jack Urey. He was 97 years old, the oldest player to ever play. He's since passed on. 97 years old. He's playing Texas Hold'em in the World Series of Poker main event. $10,000 event, okay? And he slow rolled somebody, right? And the people were saying, oh, he couldn't hear him or anything like that. He's an old guy. Wait, you when you're, when you're 97 be... years old, though, that's a good excuse to oh, fall back. I, I, I couldn't hear you. It it's... was hilarious. <laughs> and even this year, you know, in the 2015 rendition of the World Series main event, you had a, I think, a 62-year-old who made it, a 71-year-old who made it. It's not just a game for the young. Yes, you do have to be a minimum age 
to play, whether it's online or in your land-based jurisdiction, but it's a game for young, old, men, women, it's for everybody. So don't think, oh, okay, you only have to be young, that's the only way you can uh, succeed at poker. Another uh, interesting misconception Dane talked about, that a healthy bankroll is all that it takes to move up in stakes. I Ooh, beg to differ once that's again. A big, that's a big mistake. Right. That's, that's a way to suddenly not have a healthy bankroll anymore. Yes. How many that you hear about all these bankroll challenges that people are gonna go ahead, okay, I'll build it up and then move to the next level and build it up, or sometimes they're not ready. Their bankroll only has, you know, a uh, couple thousand dollars in it, and they're going to go ahead and start playing five, ten. Right. You can't do well, it. Some some of them get lucky. Those well, are like moving, those crazy moving stories. Moving up the stakes is not a bad idea. Yeah. If you feel comfortable enough and you're doing well enough, it's mm -hmm. a, you're, it's a good idea to try to step it up a level. Right. But you don't want to suddenly jump to the level of the pros. You're going to end up uh, you're going to end up losing a lot there, and they're going to be happy to see you sitting at their table. Of course. And even if you do make it up to that level, yes, you have more money, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have that same skill set. I mean, you have people. Let's say you jump from five ten to ten twenty or something. Right. These are people who have been playing ten twenty for very very long time and usually the higher you go up the higher the skill level except if you're one of those whale billionaires you know who just jumps into the super high roller events and plays for you know hundreds of thousands of dollars at a time but don't you know don't uh, be misconceived I guess if that's a verb is that a verb that works it okay works. we verbed it we will poker that verb <laughs> Next, uh, bluffing. Uh, bluffing isn't necessary in poker. Another common misconception, uh, you do need to bluff once in a while. For example, we're bluffing right now because we're not it's really prepared uh, for this broadcast. <laughs> but we're sure as hell trying. We're hoping you enjoy You can't it. wait for the cards to play your game for yeah. you. You gotta be able to step up and play the game. And, you, sure. and the only way you're gonna do that is bluffing. And I love it. I love sitting at a table and hearing those words. Well. I'm just not getting the cards. Right. And and you sit there and with a small smile, it's like, oh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm completely getting all the cards. I, I've had aces 10 times in a row. That's just, if it, I'm not bluffing. If it wasn't meant to be part of the game, there wouldn't be this idea of bluffing in the first place. It's an integral part of every player's strategy, no matter how tight you are as a player, no matter how aggressive you are, you have to time your bluffs. You have to have that as a part of your game. Be prepared to switch gears mm -hmm. once in a while. We'll do one more of these. There are just uh, nine total misconceptions is that Texas Hold'em takes five minutes to learn, but a lifetime to master. I don't know. I still haven't learned the game completely, if you <laughs> ask me. <laughs> well, I certainly, I certainly haven't mastered it, but as we said before, you know, you can... You know, the learning curve, actually, with online poker is way, way steeper, way higher than it ever used to be. You know, say it used to take a lifetime to master because there was like one book out there. Right. You know, there was no poker coaching, no poker training programs. You go today and you could find as much, you know, a library full of poker books, poker training materials, sites like ours at PokerUpdate.com where you can read all about the industry, about how to play, about strategy, things like that. That's, and it won't it, take it, you a lifetime. That's how you really improve your skills also. Someone who just sits back and plays the game and expects to get better, you need to actually, it's, it's, a, it's a sport you can study, it's a sport you can learn. You know, you learn from the experts and their, and their strategies. For sure. I actually really love uh, getting into the fourth article then that they're oh, yeah. Opening up, and they're they're giving more materials for people now that they're able to. Uh, they're opening now different uh, poker uh, poker shows that are going ah. to help teach. Uh, uh, they help show a little bit about the life behind poker, which is a really great tool to be able to learn a little bit more about the game. Exactly. So Poker Central, again, it's the network we mentioned earlier. It's going to be debuting this fall. Uh, it's a 24/7 poker network called Poker Central, and among the different types of programming they're going to have, two two new shows were announced. This is a good article by. Charles Redmuller that he put together for us. Uh, one of them is called Pokerography, which is poker biography. They're going to take a look at the behind the scenes of the lives of some great, very well-known, famous poker faces from television like Phil Hellmuth, Antonio Esfandiari, Vanessa Selvas, Michael Mizrahi, uh, Jason Somerville, Mike Sexton, a whole bunch of different names. They're going to be finishing filming, um, I don't know, the next few months or so, and then that show's going to debut. Sounds really interesting. I'd love to know what the grinder Absolutely. does away from the table. We get to we get <laughs> to understand these personalities a lot more. See sure. that, uh, first of all, that they're just like other people. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, the, you know, we get to see them away from the felt. It's oh, you mean like Phil Hellmuth is not just blowing up every time he gets like a wrong order play? 
placed at a fast food agency, a fast food uh, restaurant or something? One would hope not. Yeah, I would hope not. <laughs> so it would be interesting, I guess, to follow Antonio Esfandiari for the day. Does he just do magic tricks and entertain people all day, or he's just like a regular cool dude with a family life? And I think it'd be interesting to you know see these stars away from the felt. It's a good thing. And the other uh, show putting uh, on Poker Central is called Inside Poker. Uh, the host of the show is going to be noted tournament director Matt Savage. He's also a, a founding member of the TDA, the Tournament Directors Association. Great host for something like this. What's Inside Poker going to be all about? Well, we'll get to see a lot more again, uh, again about the different types of uh, the different types of games. What goes on with the, with the hands and things like that. Okay, and also in the industry, I think he's going to be, you know. Uh, possibly touring interesting poker rooms, meeting other interesting people, maybe the people behind the cameras, maybe the people who are traveling to all these exotic locations and being tournament directors. You know Absolutely. Think? You'll get to actually see how a tournament functions, uh, how, a, how a tournament is set up. So definitely uh, a type of show we'd see. And maybe our show, The Weekly Burn and Turn, may someday be syndicated. We can, on, we can hope, we right? We can hope. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, that is the end of this week's Weekly Burn and Turn for the week of August 23rd, 2015 here at Poker Update. You liked us. You want to tell us. Guys, you got to prepare a little bit more next time. Things, <laughs> like, things like that. Let us know on Twitter at Poker Update. We're also at uh, the, at the uh, Poker Update uh, on Facebook as well. Uh, you can find us. Where else can you find us? Oh, yeah. Press at PokerUpdate.com. Send us an email. And uh, be sure to subscribe here to our YouTube channel. We'll definitely be coming to you each week on Thursday with uh, another new episode. That's it. See you later. <laughs>